Hello, good evening and welcome to New Forest Morphs. We're doing a Saturday night live recording here and uh, I thought I'd use the technology that we've been uh, using over the last few days to maybe just share a little extra for Saturday night. Um, so tonight we're going to be looking at the hurricane uh, gene and uh, before we go into that you'll see there's a picture of one on the screen and this is a super hurricane known as a uh, Hayabusa and uh, the nice thing about this particular snake is if you look carefully at the genetics um, the super version emphasizes the hurricane shapes swirling like a hurricane um, but we'll come back and talk a bit more about that but first of all um, just wanted to say a couple of things um, we've had a suggestion from uh, one of our viewers and it's interesting I'll just show you what I mean um, if I just click on here a second and there we go so it was Kaz Ben and uh, he was just commenting on one of my videos for this week and he said you actually got me going at the end it's lovely to see true emotion another awesome video guys would love to meet you both and talk snakes when the lockdown is over and I responded and said thank you Kaz you may have given me an idea to do a live chat and have our very own snake take so <laughs> I've been thinking about this and I just wanted to put this out to the community that we're, we're in um, would anyone be interested in doing a live chat and if you could let me know in the comments in this film uh, or you can send me a personal message whatever you prefer as I was thinking about doing like a Saturday night live uh, broadcast or live, live chat where you can have the opportunity to ask questions or interject or share information and uh, we could build up a nice little um, gathering with lockdown we can't get together like the traditional meetings that um, snake keepers used to do is used to go to a uh, meet somewhere in a nice either in someone's home or maybe in a particular venue and a whole bunch of like-minded people got, got together and they used to even bring snakes with them and have a good chin wag and good chat and it was a real brotherly sisterhood in the snake and reptile community and obviously with lockdown that can't be done so we've got to think outside the box and maybe there's a way that we can at least have a verbal discussion with one another and make a contribution, discuss hot topics, any issues during the week. Um, but anyway, let me know your thoughts. Just wanted to throw that one out there. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is um, we've also got the Friday competition that comes to an end. We're doing our 300 subscriber giveaway. And we've only got about another six days before the competition comes to an end. So just a little reminder, if you haven't had a chance to comment on our 300 subscriber giveaway... Uh, please feel free to jump on that video, put a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and then just share with a friend and then make a comment. And then your comment will go into our random generator and you've got a chance of winning one of five T-shirts. Yes, we're giving out five T-shirts, stickers, magnets, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, so far we've got 25 comments, which means um, everyone on there at the moment has got a uh one fifth chance of winning a t-shirt so one out of five at the moment but obviously if you want to jump on there uh, there's a good chance you'll get a freebie so i wanted to thank everyone for all the support you've given us um, over the last few weeks uh subscriber has uh, a number of subscribers have gone up i believe by 10 percent this week so thank you everyone for sharing with your friends to me that's uh, a wonderful wonderful bit of growth in our in our channel and we appreciate all your support and all your um, participation and you're you're the ones that are uh, creating the questions and i'm just basically trying to do a daily blog i don't know how long i can keep this up for but <laughs> we should do the best we can but keep um, running in those comments keep asking me these questions and interjecting and uh, it'd be great if we could actually um, build the content based on our subscriber input and i really think that's the way to go proactive on the channel so thanks again everyone for all your contributions we'll get back and try and pick up any other questions that we have missed this week obviously there's quite a few questions out there but we'll do our best to try and cover as many questions as we can but also just to let you know that i will be trying to give a, a response to some of your questions as well so if if you don't get a chance to come onto the channel i will do my level best to try and answer the questions as best we can Okay, so that's the Friday competition, and that comes to an end on the 15th of January at 12 noon UK time. Okay, so before we go on to discuss the hurricane gene, um, I wanted to just give you an update on the spider combos, because we've done further research and we had some good questions uh, this week on the spider gene and how we can help to... Uh, do some combos that uh, uh, can can help with the issues that the spider sometimes throws at us 
and tonight's video I've chosen the hurricane because I've just found another gene. <laughs> Um, at least there's claims out there that the hurricane will help stabilize the wobble of the spider. So there's another reason why I'm thinking about getting into the project. There's many other reasons, but um, I really would like to uh, see if I can find that super hurricane again. Here we go. Well, there you go. There's a straightforward hurricane for you. Uh, now, if you look at it, it um, has swirly patterns, uh, a nice gold color. It looks very... Uh, to use the word radioactive and uh, this was discovered by a German producer called Hans Weiner and this was produced in 2010 and he's based in Germany and he also produced the super form a few years later and he called that the Hayabusa uh, Hayabusa Busa. and I'll just go back onto the Hayabusa if I can find it let's have a little look and see there's the super so look at the difference between the two you can see how the impact of the super, I think it's fantastic. And it looks like a, uh, I think using the word of um, Dave Palumbo, who's the, um, a world champion bodybuilder that's into snakes in a big way. And I think he's doing the retail outlet out there in the, in the US. Um, but he put out a really good video. So thank you, Dave, for your contribution to this gene and, and, and feeding that information through to us. But um, yeah, Dave was nicknaming this the... Um, I think he calls it the front double biceps and it's built mainly because if you look at this one here it looks like it's a bodybuilder that's posing and he's doing a double bicep move um, and that's another reason why I think Dave likes it because he's an, he's an ex-bodybuilder so thank you for that now before we go into the detail I just wanted to show you something I found which came from a question that I had this morning which I think I featured on my latest video and it was from Chris Pied, who was just asking me whether, what my thoughts were on whether we can add any other genes to help stabilize the spider. I think he felt it was um, genetic and, and, and nothing else could be done with it. But looking at some of the various articles, now I've brought you here to bp.net, which is one of the biggest um, forums for ball python enthusiasts and other reptile keepers. I quite like it uh, because there's a good, healthy, intelligent discussion. And... You know, in one of my films this week, I was suggesting that the blackhead um, mixed with the spider would actually help stabilize the wobble. It turns out, looking at this article, that I didn't realize this, but it, they're suggesting that it actually could zero the wobble completely. So there's a few examples of how the blackhead spider interact. And there's a blackhead bee, or bumblebee, which is actually a blackhead pastel spider. And you can see it does look different to the spider. You can see the black infl blackhead influence. And you can still see the spider web still here. Um, but it's not quite the same as the spider. Um, but there are obviously some interesting comparables. But as we work our way down, you can see that the spider is still having quite an influence um, as you compare it with a regular spider. Let's move it down a bit further. And let's have a look and see so it looks as though it's moving towards calico. So the white of the spider is moving more into a calico look. But as you move down, there's more and more different versions. So one of Chris's concerns, I think, was that he felt that if you mix blackhead with spider, although it might stabilize the wobble, you'd end up with a, a blackhead looking snake and you lose the, <laughs> the traits of the spider. And I understand his concern. But as I was going through, I suddenly came upon another version that was produced by um, Ralph Davis, I believe. And let's see if we can find it. I think it's this one here. Uh, let's have a little look and see what it says on this one here. So this article here was done back in January. What date did we have that? No, it was would have been, um, let's have a look at the date, 10th of April 2012. And this is the bit that got me excited. It's, this is what he says. I spoke with Ralph about my findings. And he confirmed he has actually made a remarkable snake with the blackhead spider female from 2005 this year. I'm sure if you do your homework, you can figure this out. I really don't understand how the blackhead does this to the spider. All these animals present no wobble. What helped me piece this information together was the fact that there are mutations out there that mask the spider's mutation completely. If you look at the super phantom spider, that is a perfect example of how you don't virtually see the spider mutation in the appearance. But this one is a very neat mutation. That is obviously very powerful. And he goes on to explain what 
that uh, Ralph bred to his original, and he actually managed to pick up some of Ralph Davis's originals. So some of the, depending on which line you go, I think the Ralph Davis line does give you the spider look. It looks a bit calico, but I love calico anyway, so I'm not complaining. But if it, if it stabilizes the um, spider, and look how it changes the pattern of the spider as well. It's very interesting. So I think it's worthy of um, having a shoot, shoot for that. And I think it's actually lovely to see that other breeders are actually mixing these morphs to try to help the 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 spider in terms of its genetics so anyway i'll leave you there with that one let's move back now to the hurricane gene so i went on to morph market and this one the european website which i have here and you can see the prices that the hurricanes come in and how they look so here we have a hurricane heck clown and that comes in at 1500 for a female so the hurricane is a co-dominant gene which means that it produces 50 percent of the offspring will be hurricane and 50 percent will be either normal or whatever the genes are in there. And if we look at the different combinations that we've got here, let's just go through and have a look at some I've picked out. And uh, So this one is 100% het for albino. So that looks just like the hurricane, but the 100% het albino doesn't actually see the albino look. But I do have an albino in the American morph market. Now, I wonder if I can find that for you and show you the, the comparison between the hurricane albino. Well, there it is. Now, look at the impact. So, crazy patterns on the albino. Look what the hurricane does to it. Isn't that amazing? Those swirly patterns are being made manifest in the albino. It's a very strong dominant gene, so I'm impressed. That's coming in at 2,000 US dollars, that one. Right, going back, let's see what other things we can find here. So, I like the look of this one. This is a hurricane Mojave pastel. Again, 100% heck clown. And that's been purchased, and that's coming in at nearly three thousand pounds. And quality captives produce that. Again, you can see all the swirly patterns mixing nicely with the Mojave, and I think that's a very, very pretty snake. And as we move on, this is the Hurricane Enchi Super Stripe. So the Enchi Super Stripe, you can see the Super Stripe coming through, but you can see how the Hurricane messes up the pattern a little bit. So those wavy patterns are showing in the hurricane let's have a look at the hurricane lesser that fades out of the bottom you still have those swirly patterns pretty snake that's coming at 750 euros so to start getting into the project isn't as expensive as i expected this is a relatively new gene and it isn't heavily um, being used in the in the european market the americans i think are way ahead of us and uh, they've got a lot more choices but we'll carry on through the European market first, then we'll look at what the US market has to offer. So this one is a lesser Enchi. So we had Enchi to the lesser. And you can still see the hooking and all the different swirling on there. It's a beautiful example. That one's 850. Here we have the Hurricane Yellow Belly. And this is a local uh, UK breeder, not too far from myself, based in Fordham Bridge in England. And... Uh, that one, unfortunately, is on hold because <laughs> I possibly, if, if I'm going to get into the project, it'd be lovely to buy one from him because look at the price coming in, six ninety five. I think that's quite reasonable. That is for a hurricane yellow belly. So the hurricane still has quite an impact on that yellow belly. And I was thinking I could probably use a yellow belly to get into my highway project, and I'm wondering what a hurricane highway would look like. I don't think there's one out there at the moment, but, um, yeah, I might have to... Uh, see what's available out there so here we go there's your straightforward hurricane that's your super and i think the reason why it's called the hayabusa is because when um hans was developing the super i think he was walking down the street and suddenly a very fast motorbike went past him and he was talking to his mate and uh his mate said he asked him what that was the bike it was a really fast motorbike and he turned around and said it was a uh, Hayabusa. So I think that's how the name came because Hayabusa is fast motorbike. And I guess looking at the hurricane, a double dose of hurricane is going to be fast because it just whips off really quickly. So there's the inspiration for the name for you. Moving on up. This is the target I'm looking to try and achieve. We're getting very close to what I want to try and achieve. Now, this is a hurricane clown which I think is absolutely gorgeous. And look what the hurricane does to the clown, all the swirlings going on in there. 
Um, this is coming in at seven and a half thousand euros, so it's not cheap. And this is a female that's almost up to size. She's a thousand grams, so you're going to be buying into, you know, within about, I don't know, you could probably get her up to fifteen hundred in the next six months. So it'll be ready for the next season. And that's available, and you're looking at seven and a half thousand euros. But when I looked at that, I thought, then my goodness me, you've got a codom and a recessive with one other het. And look at the price. And I'm thinking, the moment you get clown into the hurricane, the price is very healthy indeed. So that's another reason why I'm looking at this, because you've got to look at your breeding outcomes and see what income can be generated from your projects. So I think for me, that will give us a reasonably good return. So let's have a look and see what other ones we've got in here. So I was thinking I could buy myself a hurricane het clown to get into it quite reasonably. Now this is a female that's worth about £1,500 and this is based up in Glasgow in Scotland, Apex Exotics. So I could invest £1,500 in a girl like this. Now she's only 100 grams, so it will take me two years, two and a half years to get her up to size. But in three years time, we'll have a very powerful animal. So the difference is £1,500 for a baby as opposed to going for the visual clown, 7,500. Now that has got 100% het ghost in there as well. So you are buying a second recessive opportunity. But I just think that it's um, in a more affordable entry into the Hurricane Clown project. And there aren't a lot of these about. So you know, I was surprised there was one there. So moving up, you know I love my lessers. Now just look at that. That's a lesser yellow belly hurricane. So when you mix the yellow belly with the lesser and the hurricane, I think that's a very, very beautiful snake. And that's 100% het for hypo. So that'll probably be the orange ghost. Hypo and orange ghost are the same gene. Look what the orange ghost does. Because the gold, there's golds in the hurricane, and I think it's just adding to the color. A very, very beautiful snake. 900 US. Now we're into the American market. 900 US dollars for that. Let's see what other things are out there in the American market. Well, there's your American market. You can see a whole a lot more. Instead of having just two pages, there's at least five pages in, in the US. So they've got two or three times the amount of um, hurricanes than we have, which is really funny, isn't it? Because it generated in Europe, yet the Americans see the potential better than us, I think. And I think maybe we're either lagging behind. Um, maybe we're lagging behind on the potential, but I think it's got great potential and I'm seriously thinking about getting into it. So let's have a little look. Justin Kabelka's into the project. He's selling his Hurricane Leopard Clown. That's the end goal that I'm trying to achieve. Hurricane Leopard Clown is what I'd like to get into. And you can see that's coming in at seven and a half thousand euros, uh, dollars for a double co-dominant with a clown, which I'm finding amazing. It's much easier to get your co-doms into the clown because you only need one parent to, to have the leopard and one parent to have the hurricane. And then you either need two hets, clowns, or you need a visual clown and a het clown. So I think that these would be quite easy to produce. So I'm amazed that they're going for such big money. But let's have a look and see what else we've got going on here. Now this is absolutely stunning. Yeah, you know I love my um, Enchies. Well, just look at this. This is an Enchi Hurricane Hypo Rainbow. And they think it might possibly be a Super Enchi. What a beautiful snake. And that's coming from actually Dave Palumbo Python. So the bodybuilder I was talking about, he's putting one out, 8,000 US dollars for that. And what a lovely, lovely animal. And he's got the rainbow gene that he's mixing into that hypo rainbow hurricanes. So Dave, that is an absolutely stunning animal. And look, you can see all the swirly patterns. You know, that's an amazing, absolutely amazing. And it's been purchased, someone's bought it. So that's the American market there. Let's keep going on. Uh, Hurricane Leopard, 100% Heck Clown. So if you don't, if you want to get into the project on a smaller budget, this is a $3,000 snake. Now look what the Leopard and Hurricane do together. Leopard is a wacky pattern. Hurricane is even wackier. So if you add the two together, you get double dose of wacky there. And that's 100% Heck for Clown. So I think an animal of that nature, that's a male, would be worthwhile having. See what else we can find here. Now, this is the Hurricane Banana. Now, look what the Hurricane's doing to the banana. Look at the swirling on the patterns. Unbelievable. That's also got Spectre in there as well, but that's coming in at 1,200 US dollars. Beautiful looking snake. And then moving up, we've got the Hurricane and Spot Nose. The Spot Nose is known to have a very crazy, wacky pattern. 
look how it interplays with the hurricane. Extra wacky, extra gold, the gold and the blacks coming in. I think that's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful snake. And that's coming from Canada. That's 1800 Canadian dollars. This one is the Disco or the Fire Pastalenci Hurricane Double Het Hypo Het Clown. And this is produced by Candy Morphs in the US. And, then, and again, just look at the pattern, very, very wacky. That price is coming in at four and a half thousand US dollars. Here we have the Hurricane Leopard Clown, which is again, Justin Kabelka's, I think I've showed you that once before. There's a closer picture of it. And that's what I'm gonna be aiming for. There's your Hurricane Cinnamon. Jared loves his cinnamon jeans. I just wanted to show Jared that one because we've got massive cinnamons in our collection. And just look how beautiful that is. Cinnamon and Hurricane, lovely combination. Wacky, absolutely gorgeous. That price is coming in at 1800 Canadian dollars. So just a couple more to go. And then I think I showed you the Hurricane Albino. It's worthy of a second look. And here we're now moving up to a couple of projects that I wanted to get into. Now what I've done here is I've put in the genetic calculator, I've put the clown leopard, uh, which is the male, to the hurricane 100% het clown. And I'm assuming that we've got one out of eight chance of hitting eight different outcomes here. And you can see that the hurricane leopard clown is what we're shooting for. And that needs four traits. Now, the, you probably look at that and think there's only three traits, but the clown is classified as two traits because it's a het recessive. You need two hets to get the clown. That counts that as though a visual clown contains two hets. So therefore, they count that as two, and that's a single leopard gene, and that's a single hurricane. And that's why they have four traits. There's one out of eight chance of hitting any of those. Now, what I've done in my normal accountancy style I earlier, and I'm going to show you my Hurricane Leopard project, which I'm looking at here. So I've taken those outcomes and I've gone through very carefully to pick out the UK prices and what you can achieve on these outcomes. Now, assuming that we get eight eggs and there's a one eight chance in hitting all of these combos, uh, the prize, the top prize is a six thousand pound snake, Hurricane Leopard Clown. That's what they go for. The Hurricane Leopard 100% Heck Clown, two and a half. Hurricane Clown 2, Leopard Clown's about 500 pounds, Hurricane 100% Heck Clown 1500, a Leopard 100% Clown 200, Clown about 250, and 100% Heck Clown 100 pounds. 13,000 pounds of revenue income coming in. The cost of the project is 2,000, which is 500 pounds for your Leopard Clown male, 1,500 pounds for your Hurricane 100% Heck Clown female, 2,000 pound outlay, take that off the costs, that will give you a contribution towards your overheads of 11,000 pounds. So when I say contribution, that's like profit, but contribution is uh, income less direct costs, but not allowing for overheads. So you'd have to take off your overheads, but even if you had you know, a thousand pound of overhead, you're still gonna be making 10,000 pounds. So the return on that investment is 552%, which is very good. And that's with a 2,000 pound outlay. So I think that project is well worth looking at. And obviously in three years time, if you produce these animals in three years time, you'd have to discount these prices. And you'd probably find that you won't generate 13,000, you'd probably generate about eight or 9,000. And it assumes that you get eight eggs. And the reality is on the first year, it's four to six. Second year, you'll probably get six. Third year, you'll get eight and it builds. So I've given you an average of eight, um, if you like probably take a few years to get to that point, but it gives you an indication as to what you can achieve. And as long as there's a reasonable re high return, the market can drop and you're still gonna make a decent amount of income that you can then plow into your next project. So I've done a second um, version of this. So you can see there's two ways of going. You're going at a low end at 2000, or you can go straight in and buy a clown leopard hurricane for 6,000 male, and you can buy a leopard clown female for 1,000, so you could invest 7K up front, and that would generate 23,000 pounds worth of income. Because by having these two genes, these are the outcomes. There's a one eighth chance of getting a super leopard hurricane clown, and that would give you 7,000 pounds. There's a one in four chance, meaning that you could have two eggs out of eight to get hurricane leopard clown. So instead of 
having one 6,000, you'd end up with two lots because you've got much stronger genes. So that would give you another 12. And then the super leopard clown comes in about 800. The leopard clown's about 1,000. And the, um, sorry, they're 500 each, but there's two of them because you've got a 25% chance. And then here you've got the hurricane clown, which is 2,000. And then you've got the clown, 250. So that will give you 23,000 pounds of income. The original cost would be seven. The contribution would be 16. So you get an extra 5,000 pounds back by going, investing seven instead of two. But your return on your investment drops by half because you've had to outlay seven to get in 16. So it's just over 200% growth. So my using my accountancy hat, I would be tempted to go in at that level because it's a two grand outlay, less risk. If the prices do crash, you're losing less money. You go in at that level, there's more risk because prices could crash, everyone else could be doing this. By the time you get to sell your products or your, your um, snakes, you could find that the return won't be 23, it could only be 10 and you might make a small profit. So I would be tempted to go that model personally if I was advising as an accountant, but that would be the possibility. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it gives you a little bit of an idea of what I do when I'm appraising projects. And you can see I'm using the calculator. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Paul at New Forest Morphs. We shall hopefully catch up with you tomorrow. Have a great weekend and we shall see you soon. Bye bye for now.